Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to another FNAF news video, this time dedicated to the Fanverse initiative. So for about the past month or two, I've been gathering a lot a lot of info on the games in the Freddy Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. Which, if you don't know, includes One Night at Flumpty's, T-Jock, Pop Goes, Candies, and also FNAF Plus. And I have news on all the entries in the initiative in this video except for FNAF Plus. The reason why is because Fizdom, the creator of the game, actually held a Q&A on his Twitter page where he revealed quite a lot about the game. So that's gonna be in its own separate video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at this Johnny Blocks fan art. Thank you guys so so much for all the fan art. If you want to submit some, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, it's all linked down below. So is the artist of this post. And let's hop into it, starting off with One Night at Flumpty's 3. This is kind of old news, but I haven't talked about it. So back in late March, the Game Jolt page for Flumpty's 3 was actually leaked. Geonochrome didn't have a problem with it, but a interesting thing to note about the page is that, as you can see, provided by the screenshot from Kane Carter over on Twitter, it's actually rated M Mature as as opposed to T for Teen, like the two previous entries. The reason for this change is the intense cartoon violence in the game. Kane pointed out that the thumbnail for the game actually is censored from the original teaser, which actually had blood in it. He says, I wasn't specifically told to censor it, but I figured it makes sense to keep the blood behind the filter that asks you if you're an adult or not, which does make sense. So yeah, that is the news about Flumpty's 3. Apparently it's rated mature, so that's gonna be interesting. I I believe it's the first FNAF game to be mature. Of course, FNAF game because it is in the initiative, which makes it official, but it's still a fan game. It's it's a complicated subject. Moving on now to T-Jock, it's actually been very, very silent with T-Jock, and apparently there's a good reason why. Back in April, Kane Carter, the creator of Pop Goes, who is usually very active on Twitter, revealed that Nixon, who is creating the T-Jock Ignited Collection for the initiative, actually isn't working on T-Jock at the moment. Kane says that he hasn't been working on it since the announcement of the fanverse. Not every fanverse game is actually being developed, it's just a collection collection of games that will release eventually, and I believe that's exactly what the Ignited Collection of T-Jock is going to be. This was posted back in April, specifically on the 18th. I don't know if Nixon is working on the game right now. He's been very silent, but, you know, we gotta respect his privacy. He's got a lot on his plate right now. I believe he's also developing Dark Deception, so, you know, give him a break. Now, before we hop into Pop Goes Evergreen, I want to talk about Chase Animatronics, which was a game that was released not too long ago. It was going to be a mini game in Chef Wanted. It was a game being developed by Kane Carter, Emil Mako, and many more, and it actually got cancelled, but they released Case Animatronics, which is a mix of FNAF and Pac-Man. And to everyone's surprise, Kane back in March released this thread of tweets. Can confirm that we have sent a three-page pitch for the reboot of Case Animatronics with a new name to Scott for his consideration of it joining the Fanverse initiative. Once we are done with FNAF 4, and Pop Goes Evergreen. Absolutely no promises, but wish us luck. Now, even though it's not confirmed if it's getting into the initiative, Kane and Emil very obviously have plans if it does, which is why I said this thread of tweets, because I, I do want to go over what the game will be like if it gets into the initiative. Again, it's not in just yet, but if it gets in, this is their idea. If we return to Case Animatronics, it would be made again from scratch with new visuals, mechanics, and a ton of new levels and a new name, a reboot. Someone asked, wait, but doesn't that Pac-Man-like gameplay give you copyright? Meaning they can't make this fan game because Pac-Man owns the copyright over this uh, genre of games. Kane said, well, you can't really copyright gameplay. All the sprites, levels, music, sound effects, and writing is 100% original to Case Animatronics. That being said, we would change it to be further from Pac-Man and closer to FNAF. Not really sure what Kane means here because the whole point of Case Animatronics is that it is Pac-Man, but you know, it's, it's still FNAF. So I don't know, if it gets into the initiative, I guess we'll find out what he means. Now something that's very interesting here is that Kane replied to your boy, moi. I asked about levels and he replied saying the rebooted version would have tons more levels. Five 
for each FNAF game, plus potentially Thanvos ones. Generated levels may be tough, but at the very least, I think Emil wants to implement a level creator, which would be very exciting. Think Mario Maker, but with Chase Animatronics. That would be so exciting. So that's it about Chase Animatronics. Again, it's not in the initiative, but if it gets in, that's what we can expect. So now let's move on to Pop Goes Evergreen. We have a few teasers, but mostly just new information. Someone asked about voice acting. Kane said plenty of voice acting, sure, but not for the animatronics. Back in March, Kane revealed that Pop Goes Evergreen was going to take advantage of Click Team's Fairy Fly extension. Full 3D environments, but it was proven to be way too limiting for our concept. So here's some footage of a demo called PT Pop Goes Test that Garrett Tube made for us using Fireflies. There's a lot of info about Fireflies. One of them is that it has no lighting. All lighting needs to be baked into the materials of the models you import, which means for a realistic environment, you can't really have anything actually move without importing a new model with its shadows and reflections on the surrounding environments. And Kane also revealed that the current plan for Pop Goes Evergreen is point and click with some nice shaders and animations. Something like Porkchop's Adventure or a Shadow over Freddy's. Speaking about lighting, very recently Kane put out a tweet saying a minor update to the lighting of the rooms in Evergreen. Old ones on the left, new ones on the right. These changes were made for a few reasons, but mostly to create more interesting interesting shadows. Specifically for when an animatronic is in the room, Game Jolt page has been updated. Moving on now, we got this thing. This is the Pop Bin, I'm terrified. This is Pop Bin, a novelty trash can that was modeled for Pop Goes Evergreen. We won't be using this version as the modeler who made it no longer works on the team, but another team member will be remaking it this week. Thought I'd show off this version for fun. And then this is the new Pop Bin. It has a bigger mouth, a simpler shape, less small breakable parts, and it's also larger and wider for a bigger bin drum. And then moving on to the juicy stuff, we have the endoskeleton. Freaking look at this, this is amazing. Development on Evergreen has been a bit slow lately, but the endoskeleton model has been finished and rigged with new materials too. Here's a quick new render of him. Fun fact, this render has a lot of details omitted, as in we've hidden some parts of the design. The actual endoskeleton model is even more detailed than this. Actually, freaking how is that even remotely possible? This looks insane. I'm not even joking, you know, like no cap on a stack. This is freaking incredible. And even though this was revealed back in March, I do want to show off this teaser in case anybody missed it. It's of Stone the Crow and you unlocked it if you beat Chase Animatronics. We've talked about it before on the channel, I think, so if I remember, I'll leave that video linked down below. And then also, I want to talk about the release date for Pop Goes Evergreen. Don't get too excited because this is not confirmation. Someone asked, quick question, do you still think that Evergreen will release in 2021? If not, that's not a problem. BTW. Kane replying saying it's unlikely. 2022 is a more reasonable guess, but I'm not giving any estimated release dates officially. So that's why I'm saying don't get too excited because it is just a guess. Oh yeah, and also this. <laughs> I got one last teaser to show off. Sorry, I thought I was finished with all of them. This was posted a couple days ago. Uh, the caption is he has his spooky moments. I <laughs> I don't get it. Kane just says it's another image of Pop Goes LOL. So it's not really a teaser because I mean, we've also seen his render before, but yeah, there's <laughs> another look at Pop Goes. And finally for FNAC 4, again, we've also seen this image before, but in case you missed it, these are the little mini frittles, but for kids, candies. We've seen them in a teaser before with uh, the fun time candy character. And you got this image again if you beat Chase Animatronics. So that is all the news. Again, FNAF Plus info will be coming soon, hopefully sometime later this week. It's just, there's a lot of info on it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you boys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.